Hey planner friends, how's it going? Thanks so much for stopping by my channel. My name is Ryan and this is Man with the Plans. And as it says up top, we're back for another budget. This time, it's June. June 2023 to be exact. And I'm keeping it simple. Again, I've really been enjoying kind of the way I've been setting this up lately. I'm just in my Erin Condren uh, Deluxe Monthly here. So the way that I do this is I'll track my bills over here, the daily spending over here in the calendar. Here's a, here's a quick look back at kind of how May has been going so far. I've got to kind of catch up on last week. I'm just using a sticker sheet from Erin Condren. I'll leave it linked down below. This is one of the newer ones I think that just came out, so I'll leave it linked as long as a link to this as well if you're interested. So it is June. We're almost halfway through the year already. I'm really enjoying the setup of this so far. I spent some time just kind of playing around, getting things the way that I like them, and I'm really enjoying kind of the simplified layout with just using one sticker sheet with a little help from some other decorative stuff along the way here. I'm just gonna go ahead and dive right in. I don't have a whole lot of craziness going on or intro here, so let's just begin. If you're new here though, and you love budgeting, planning, or personal development, and you wanna learn more about my budgeting story and kind of what I've been up to, go ahead and click that subscribe button, and uh, I'll leave a link to my playlist of all the budgeting videos so you can go ahead and watch those. So for quite a while now, I've not been sharing my income, but because it is uh, my actual working budget, I will add it off camera. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in here. We've got ourselves our expenses off on the side. So we'll start with my rent. And I've recently, I don't know if you've, if you've seen my budget before, I tend to wander. I tend to wander when I am writing these things down. So my new thing that I've been doing is just like throwing this down here and then straightening it out so it's a guide that I don't kind of write all over the place. It's like a new thing for me that I'm learning. You know, it only takes about five years of budgeting before I start to learn it. So the first thing is my rent and my parking. It actually belong, parking belongs with the storage fee, but it doesn't matter, it ends up being paid for the same company. So to start with, my rent here in uh, Minneapolis is $1,699 a month. I love where I live, it's in the scenic North Loop. Um, it's beautiful, and then of course my storage and my parking, it's um, a garage spot that's heated. So, and if you live here in Minnesota, you know that's a requirement because I am not a big fan of taking snow off of my car. The next thing I've got is my utilities. This is gas, water, and electric. I'm thinking that as it's getting warmer, I'm gonna be using the AC more, so I budgeted $150. I feel like it's been pretty good. Um, I really only use it at night, but hey, we'll see what happens as the month gets warmer. Moving on, insurance. That's car insurance, as well as renter's insurance, and then there's something in there about like hospital income loss or something, I don't know, it was for a bundle. That's gonna be $113, that's pretty consistent every single month, so I don't anticipate that to be much of an issue. It changed earlier this year. Next up is my internet. I have Xfinity, which is great. Next up is gas. This is for driving to and from work. I'm gonna estimate $175. I don't know, we'll have to see. It depends on how often I have to go into the office every week. I have like a 40 minute commute, so that kind of catches up with me, if you know what I'm saying. Next up is my grocery budget. Uh, that is gonna be $225. I am trying to eat through my freezer a little bit because it's packed full of stuff, so we'll see what happens with that. But again, I think the price of food is still pretty high, so hopefully that can start to kind of wind its way down. Uh, restaurant spending, I am notoriously over in this category, so I've just given up and just put in $400. I think that will likely, it just adds up, you know, you go for a happy hour drink and then, you know, you're ended up at dinner and it just, I don't know. It's hard, especially when you're single and you're going on an occasional date here and there. Like, it just adds up. So I'm just putting in a buffer there so I can finally see that column go under for the first time in Lord knows how long. Next up is my personal spending. This is like haircuts, shampoo, clothing if I need any, although I really don't. I just switched out summer clothes from my winter clothes. I got, you gotta wait till December around here, but I really don't need any new clothing, <laughs> to be honest with you. But haircut, toiletries, toothpaste, cleaning supplies, all that good jazz. I have that budgeted at $200. Next up is my subscriptions. This includes like Netflix, Hulu, all those required things. It also is um, for my stuff for YouTube. So there's Canva, TubeBuddy, and a couple other things like Epidemic Sound for the song at the end of my video. So I am estimating, and I think we'll be under here as well, but I just can't seem to get a handle on it. I put 350, I'd like to obviously be underneath that. The next thing is my gym membership. I go to Lifetime, I love their spin classes. 
it is really expensive, so I'm considering changing things around a little bit. It's $190 a month after taxes, um, and it, it does kind of sting a bit, I'm not gonna lie. So I'm really considering making some changes to that. Next up here is my sinking fund. I actually, one of my goals for the month of June was to set a new sinking fund amount, and I actually did it already. I did that, I can, can change my goal, I guess. But so it's gonna be $475 now moving forward instead of 341 that it's been. If you wanna see that video, I'll leave it linked over here as well. You can go ahead and check that out. It's just something that I wanted to update and make sure I was kind of in line with my goals. Uh, so I've just been doing that and it's been sitting in the same Capital One 360 account for eons now. But the, the monthly amount will change a little bit more. So I think that makes sense since I hadn't updated it in like three years-ish. So things change. We are moving on to my Roth IRA to make sure I get everything submitted for the year on time. $550 a month is what it's asking for. So I'll go ahead and submit that just because that's a non-negotiable. Followed by that is uh, M1 Finance. This is the investing platform that I've been using. Um, I don't take it super seriously. I only put about $100 a month, $50 a paycheck in there. Not a whole lot, but that's okay. I just, I like putting a little bit away extra on top of what's automatically taken out of my check for retirement and what else I'm putting towards that. The next up is something that's exciting to me, and yes, you're right, it does say Taylor Swift. So my sister got Taylor Swift tickets quite a while ago, and she was on the fence about going, and somehow I offered to go with her. I live in Minnesota, she lives in New York, the concert's in Pittsburgh, so I'm flying to New York, then we're flying together to sit, spend the night there. I used airline miles that I had accrued for her and my flight, which is kind of cool. And I think I prepaid the hotel. So really, this is all incidentals. I, I enjoy Taylor Swift. I think that she's just been an artist I've liked. I'm not, I wouldn't say my name is obsessed with her, but I've heard good things about the show. So I'm looking forward to it. And all told, for the two nights that will be there, I'm just gonna put $500. I don't know, I'd like to be under in that. I hope that I will be, but who the heck knows? We'll just kind of play it by ear. So when you add all of these expenses up, the total down here should add up to $5,417 even, which is always nice. I think that is a bit high. Obviously, I think some of the expenses here, like this feels a little bit higher, this feels higher. Um, the gym just seems necessary. The new sinking fund, obviously gonna have to address that. And then 500 extra dollars for Taylor Swift. I understand that's gonna be kind of pushing my boundaries with my budget, if you will. But I think that's just fine. Yeah, so we're gonna flip over and let's go ahead and start talking about my kind of savings and investments. So I break this out into kind of four distinct categories, as you'll see here. They are as follows. I've got my emergency fund, I've got my long-term savings. These two share an account just for interest sake to get a little bit extra bang for my buck there. Then I have my M1 finance account that I am kind of keeping track of right now that has some dividend stocks and some other fun things in there. And then last but not least is my Roth IRA. I don't include my retirement that I am contributing to through work just because I don't have a choice and um, you know it just kind of sits there. Um, my company does match though which is nice so um, that's kind of moving and grooving. If you're interested in that, you know, I can certainly start to add it. And I will include it in net worth updates when I do those eventually. But for now, for the monthly budget, it's just a static percentage that's been taken out of my check constantly and it hasn't changed since I started working in local government here. So that's about it. So we'll start with the emergency fund. It's been fully funded now for quite some time. And so my starting balance is obviously going to be uh, $10,000. And my hope is that I don't have to use it this month, but God forbid if something comes up, I have the ability to. And then if that were the case, I would put all my other planning and budgeting goals on hold and go back to refill this thing. Not a super fun thing, but it happens and that's what it's there for. So I don't really feel bad about that. So we'll leave the withdrawal blank and the contributions blank if necessary, and then we'll just put the ending balance. My hope, fingers crossed, is that it ends up just being $10,000 at the end of the month. No big deal. Next up is my long-term savings. So this has just been something that was originally for a house down payment. It was for a whole bunch of other stuff. So I've kind of just been working my way towards this all along. Current number here is $23,394. 
and 73 cents. So not too shabby. I think it's a great extra little bit of savings to have squirreled away. Obviously I'm hoping it gets higher and higher over the course of the year. I actually have an auto deduct that just pulls it into there for extra savings, so that's always fun. I'll add the withdrawals here if I have to use it for anything, which I don't expect to. I will add any contributions plus interest will also throw in there and then I'll have my ending balance at the end of the month. I looked when I first opened this right after I finished baby step number two, I looked for a high interest straight a savings account and maybe it's time for me to look again because I'm using like CIT bank so I might look to change because it does take a while to move the money around but that's really not the purpose of it I was just looking for the highest way to earn a little interest not in a way of like making income but just nice to have Next up is my M1 Finance account. I have been using M1 for quite a while and I love the idea of fractional shares. It makes it less scary to start investing by putting you know, $50 in at a time so I can get a piece of an Apple stock and not have to pay a whole Apple stock price. I have a link down below if you wanna sign up for M1, you can go ahead and do that and actually you'll get a bonus and so will I. So hey, nothing wrong with that, right? A little bit extra money, nothing, nothing ever wrong with that. I don't know if you'd be interested in seeing more about my investments. I don't claim to be good at it or an expert or anything like that, but I've just been having fun along the way. But I can leave me a comment down below and I can certainly share a little bit more. In terms of M1 though, my starting balance is $4,600. $45.78. Then I'll have contribution, market gain, or loss, depending on how life is going, and then the ending balance at the end of the month. Last but not least is my Roth IRA. I have it with Vanguard. I kind of set this up also as I was wrapping up my baby step number two. And so I'm at a place now where I've got just over in my starting balance here, let's see, uh, $12,279.11. I will say that over time this has gone, this like overall if you look at my account, it's just sad because there was the past couple of years we had some rough stock goes, but it's overall down like 2%, but hey, that's the thing is if it's down now, it'll be back up about 12 or 15% a couple years down the line. So it all kind of like evens out if you will. So I got my contribution, which is gonna is probably be $550 if not more. Um, and then I like doing the percent complete. I feel a little behind with getting the year done, but it always it always ends up catching up. I always make sure I get my 6,500 bucks in there. And then obviously my ending balance, I'll be able to include as well. Yeah, so that is my savings and investments category. Are you investing in anything else? I'm not really a big crypto person. I tried that and got burned. <laughs> So I've kind of just stuck to my tried and true savings, some stocks with some dividends in there for some fun over, over the long haul, and then just my Roth. Nothing crazy at the moment, but let me know what else you're into in terms of investing, and I'd love to learn a little bit more. That's one of the fun things about this is with all this, with not having debt anymore, I've got all these options I can explore further, you know, which is half the fun. So then last, but certainly not least, are my money goals. And I've got three of them for the month this year. Okay, so it says map out savings goals for the remainder of 2023. What this means is since I completed my emergency fund and I have some long-term savings built up, I was originally calling it my house fund. I'm not sure if that's what I want to do. I want to just figure out what I want to be saving towards. Um, I'm at the point now where I'd like a new computer. I've had my MacBook Pro. I love it since 2018, but I'd love to invest in something newer, that's a little bit sleeker. Um, so starting to save for something like that, putting that long-term savings to good use, um, getting focused on what else I wanna do. Is Are there investments I wanna make and save for? Are there other improvements for my car, new tires, right? What are those things that I'm putting money away towards every month just to make sure I have something to set my marker towards? Because to me, I'm very goal-driven. And so if I'm not actively working towards a goal, it kind of, it just feels like I'm kind of spinning in the ether because I'm still not sure if I'm ready to buy a home. Um, and you know, that seems like the next logical step, but is it Minnesota that I'll be buying in? I don't know. So there's just lots of stuff that's still open to be determined, if you will. All right, so goal number two is a simple one. It's just canceling unneeded subscriptions and expenses. So that's just the, something for me that I really wanted to be more thorough with. So yeah, this has been a killer for me. I feel like there's lots of stuff slipping through the cracks, if you will, in my budget that I'm not aware of. I track them. 
um, but it doesn't mean that I don't understand the value of it. Am I using it fully? And so I'm gonna take some time this month to really look into, well, do I really watch Hulu enough to have it still? Little stuff like that, because sometimes, you know, you just see an expense crossover and you realize, oh, okay, hey, there it goes. But what is the value of it? Is it something I really do cherish and care for and appreciate and use? Or is it something that like, I've just been letting go for quite a while now and haven't actually been taking advantage of because I'm simply just lazy, I guess, is really what it's been. And that's how I feel currently with my budget is it just feels a little lazy. I've seen my expenses creep up a little bit and I just want to be more focused and diligent. So this month is really trying to recenter, refocus, re-energize and get committed to something because uh, I've been listening to a lot of Taylor Swift, if you will, and that song, Death by a Thousand Cuts, it, this is it right here. You know, little things like this trickling through are what is what's costing me and it may have big impacts in the future. So I'm gonna get really committed to that. And the last goal is connected to all of them because I wanna do like an audit of my recent expense history. So the last one is I wanna audit my expenses. There you go, missing an S. Expenses for 2023 and make adjustments. I mean, uh, other than my trip to Europe, which costs more than it should have, but I gotta just keep track. What are the things in the restaurant budget that's killing me? Is it the occasional Taco Bell drive through or is it my target runs? Like really looking like line by line. I'm gonna rely on uh, Rocket Money and some other software that I don't pay for, like Mint and stuff, to just track some of the things because I gotta know what's happening here. So I might actually pull together like a, a little video on kind of how I organize everything. Cause while I do it electronically, I like to write it down as well. Cause if there's something, is there's a trend I'm seeing, you know, I got it, I got it buckled down and I got to see a little bit more. And so that information and that data is important for me. So I feel like these two goals will be helpful as well as helping to get me kind of back on track. So I'm excited for this month. I feel like I have, I don't want to say more purpose, but it's more purposeful. It's more intentional. I'm really looking forward to being able to kind of stay committed. I'm anxious to see if I stay on track with my spending. I hope that Taylor Swift and things like that don't kind of impede and bust my budget. But hey, you know what? We've got, we've got, a good lesson to learn there. But if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I greatly appreciate it and it does help the channel out. Make sure you connect with me over on social media. I'm hanging out on Instagram, at know with the plans. I'm posting new videos every single week, so make sure you're subscribed if you made it all the way to the end. Bravo to you. What is your major money goal for June? What are you focusing on? What is one thing in your budget that you need to, like you realize every month goes through and you tend to skip over or forget about? Like that would be helpful for me. So leave that in the comments down below. Thanks so much and I'll see you next week. Bye, Blender friends.